David the Bear. This is going to be a very interesting stylistic matchup. The Bear tends to throw straight shots. The Lion tends to loop them. David the Bear striking first here in the black. In the red and the blue is Jana El Salawi. This fight brought to you by Bliss 104.3, playing the hottest mix from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and today, and Hala Radio. Also, our great sponsor, Unaya, Jordan's fastest growing and most trusted telecommunications provider. David the Bear doing a great job of locking up El Salawi up against the fence. He knows that he's up against it, you know, being an undefeated fighter, I'd say you don't buy into any of the odds or any of the favorites. You've never been beat. Who's to say that the next guy's gonna beat you? You gotta believe that you're untouchable, right? He stepped into this fight believing he's perfect, and so far he is. Again, we're gonna see what's more effective, the straight shots or the looping ones that you don't see. Expect the line to attack the liver. Side of the jaw. David Bear just kind of textbook with these punches, you know. Like you said, straight shots, not looping. And it looks like he may have caught a caught a thumb, something. Maybe a contact slip. I don't know what happened. Once again, this is excellent expert officiating. Very, very good job of jumping in the moment he noticed anything untoward going on with a the fighter. They'll have a medical official assess the situation, and in all likelihood, but, but, the fight will be allowed to continue. But the one thing you never say is, I can't see. <laughs> if you say those three words, like, the referee has to stop the fight. You never say that. If you don't want it to stop, anyway. He, he's got up to five minutes to have everything return to normal, and I, I'm I very confident that it will. Re, we can maybe pull up a replay, if that's possible, of that shot. That would be great. So we could see exactly where that landed. Looks like the doctor's like okay it. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna go right back to it. So we'll get that at the end of the round if we make it that far. And here we go. El Salawi and Bear. And it looks like he has a hold of that neck, but David Bear slips out. It's close, it's close, it's close, it's David close, Bear. that arm is about to break. Asalawi that is... arm is about to go. Oh God, I don't want it to break. He's pulling hard on it. David Bear won't give up. Somehow, oh, some way. Oh my God. Incredible. David the Bear. The Bear has a few less ligaments than he did. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Did you see the torque on that directly in front of us, Kirik? He was really wrenching on that arm. It was at an angle it was not supposed to go. I couldn't hear it over the roar of the crowd, but I can guarantee you that referee heard popping from that elbow. Well, one thing we could definitely say after that is that David the Bear is a tough dude. Kirk, have you ever wondered what would happen if a bear and a lion fought? They used to do that <laughs> in the Roman Coliseum. <laughs> the lions and bears. Oh, and he's going after that arm again. Man, Salawi. He grabs that arm. It's nasty. But David the bear has shown that he has some serious flexibility and some serious will. The apex predator depends on where the fight takes place. If it's underwater, it's gonna be a shark. And the ground is a little like the water. David the Bear gets out, El Salawi gets to his feet, and here we go, we're back to standing. Look for Bear to throw long, straight shots to the body and head. It's like he knows no other way.
Here comes David Bear. He's going to try to change levels and bring Salawi back down to the ground. Salawi very, very strong. Not going to be easy to drag to the ground. Bear throwing some pretty big knees. Those knees add up in a big way. Il Salawi not going away. Heart of a lion, the nickname fits perfectly. Oh, there it is, Toronto Salawi. Starting to heat up Woo! right over the middle. And there's another one, David the Bear. Just when you think Salawi's kind of making a comeback, Bear lands two straight rights. Salawi with another combination. What a warrior. Big shot to the body there by Bear. What a round. What a round. People talk about submissions not causing damage unless they are fully applied and there's a tap. That submission caused damage. That being said, they're still able to rally up some great punches, some great power shots. Let's take a little sort of look right there. That dude, you might see me turning away in fear. I mean, the hips are the hips are correct. They're squeezing together. This is just a beautiful arm bar. Ah, it hurts to look at. It really does. But somehow, David Bear survives. Waited for his moment, explodes out. And after that armbar attempt, I'd go as far to say that Bear controlled the rest of the fight in he did. that round. He did. The judges are going to give Bear this round 10 to 9, but not because it wasn't a great round and not because the lion isn't a beast. And of course, this fight, folks, is going to have title implications either way. That being said, if Bear was to win, then you, obviously you probably don't see the teammates and Hadby and Bear fighting for a title. But if Il, Sal <laughs> if Il Salawi wins, I think that's the fight you make. To any, to all the people right, watching now. who are new to this, the Bear just winked, and not in a mean way. He just gave him a friendly wink. They're friends. And just a correction, guys, whoever will win this will most likely take on Carlson Harris out of Brazil, our current brave welterweight champion. <laughs> Combination just missing for Il Salawi. What a great, what a great job by the matchmakers putting this one together. These guys complement each other well. Let's make it for a very competitive fight. This entire card was beautiful in that regard. And, you, and I'll tell you, in the past, Il Salawi, this guy just usually bullies right through people, has this incredible, tenacious quality that he can kind of break anybody's will. And he hasn't been able to do that with David Bear. And it looks like he took an unintentional low blow there from the Frenchman. It was an unintended, errant knee. They've touched hands, no animosity, nothing on purpose. The fighter now has five, up to five minutes to recover. Most fighters jump back too soon. I'm hoping that we don't have that happen here. Well, you gotta take your time. David Bear of Algerian descent, but now in France training under Obi fight alongside Tahar Hadbi, who you saw get the big victory earlier tonight over Mohamed Fakhreddin. More Don't excellent refereeing. The corner was trying to talk, but in the case of an injury, the corner isn't allowed to spike, uh, talk with their fighter. Referee rightly put an end to that. No, great officiating here, Brave. Hashtag Brave CF10 on all your social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I would have liked to see him take a little bit longer of that five minutes. And the beat goes on and a huge strike. David Bear shakes it off. Go, 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 go. 
Outside leg kick from Bear. So now he's starting to gain some steam, though. Beating off this Amon Jordan crowd. David Bear telegraphed it, was still able to get it. So now he's under his neck, but not tight enough. And now he's in a bad spot against David Bear, who's very good from the top. I do got to add, Salawi's very good from the bottom, too. This is true. Very, very tricky and very slick. Of course, as of late, the specialty for El Salawi for his submission has been the shoulder submissions. Doesn't have a triangle in his arsenal as of yet. We saw how close he was on that arm bar just last round. Don't forget, folks, still the main event of the evening to come as Elias Bodigsdam will defend his title. For all the fans watching from around the world who aren't used to this sport. Grab a hold of that arm again, and David Bear gives up his arm again. And a beautiful transition to an omoplata, and now he's looking for a triangle. This is what jiu-jitsu is all about. Hey, let's give credit where credit's due to Kingdom Fighters for shaping this young man in Jana El Salawi. These submission attempts have been right on point. That's a big shot right hand to the ground at El Salawi. The Jordanian Lion looking to make Jordan 4-0 this evening. Not going to be easy. David Bear spending a lot of time on top in this fight. Spending a lot of time on top, but not causing a lot of significant damage. It's That's be a part little... of the new rule set, too. You're it is part right. of the new rule set. These, these persistent, repeated... Submission chains may well count for something big on the judges' scorecard. It's a change that I think was definitely needed in the sport. It's a welcome one. And this is one of the progressive organizations that's implementing changes. Some other organizations are a little behind the times. <laughs> Brave is progressive, They're bringing you the best of mixed martial arts. Of course, the next time you'll see Brave Combat Federation, it will be April 13th from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. <laughs> 30 seconds left here in round number two of this highly competitive fight in the welterweight division as David Bear continues to be in a dominant position. Definitely not for a lack of trying, trying to land that ground pound and land the elbows. El Salawi doing a great job of defending from the bottom. One of those elbows got through, though, and has opened up a not insignificant cut over the eye. Doctor will take a look at it. It doesn't look anything close to severe, severe enough to stop the fight. There we go. So round two of the books. We got one more to go. going to be who wants it more will be the Jordanian Lion 
or will it be the bear? The Algerian bear. Big swing by Bear as he looks to change levels and get a takedown and try to get back on top. And a big throw by El Salawi, but he's not able to put the Bear on his back. Really surprised that the Bears been able to control Salawi like he has up against that fence. Salawi's such a strong guy, but it's just a combination of strength and technique. I really do think strength is playing a huge role here. Not trying to be funny when I say this guy really looks as strong as a bear. Oh, he's rock solid, 100%. In tremendous shape is David the Bear. It's gonna be a heel hook and oh squeeze lock attempt. Wow. I have not seen this in years. <laughs> Folks, this is one of the rarest submission attempts you'll ever see. I don't know that I've ever seen one, to be honest with you. It's an attempted knee scissor. He's turned it into a sweep, but he's still got it. This fight is turning around. Duran never gives up. He's been in some bad predicaments before and always able to rally back. But he is up against it here with three minutes to go. Still a lot of time to operate in the third round of this welterweight co-main event. There's one hook. So tough for David Bear to get over the top there, but he's going to do it. Scramble up. Trying to get around the wow. back, but now, now he's underneath of the Jordanian line, a bad spot to be. This is the payback for all that time from bottom. We're gonna get a chance now to see the Bears guard. I do not believe it'll prove to be as good as the Lions. David Bear trying to isolate an arm right now. We talked about his submission skills before. Salawi on top in a dominant position. If he can land some real dynamic ground and pound right now. Beautiful teamwork here. People say MMA isn't a team sport, but believe me, it is. There's great work here between a coach and fighter. Like a rag dog, Garrick. How strong is Salawi? Some fans say striking is more exciting than wrestling, but I can't always agree. This is some exciting wrestling tonight. Absolutely not. I agree. Oh, another rare. Looking for an arm choke from the back. It can be done. Never we'll ceases to, to amaze us, does El Salawi. The guy has crafty submissions. Like you said, I mean, stuff that you haven't seen in a long time. Just shows you the progression of MMA in Jordan. And David the Bear charges forward. He's back on top with a minute to go. Now David the Bear trying to give a little ground and pound. He does not want to make a mistake this late in the game. David the Bear on top, but not doing any damage. That has been the key of this fight. He spent so much time on top with just nothing, no sort of damage. He jumps right back in to a submission. And he is squeezing hard. He's putting a lot of torque. This is the second that time we've seen is moving down to the knee. It's getting closer. You no longer need to pass that arm to finish. Final seconds. He jumps right running to it. Bear's fighting it. He's fighting it. Can he survive? 
We're down to 10 seconds. He has to squeeze. He it did it! It's it! Oh my God! So he does it! Oh my God! That was pulled from a movie! What a finish! Tap! Tap! 10 seconds to go! Beautiful finish by the Jordanian Lion. Folks, we'll be right back with your official decision. Gentlemen, what a fight! What an incredible fight that was! And the fight comes to an end at 4 minutes and 54 seconds of the third round! Your winner by Triangle Choke out of Amman, Jordan, and the Kingdom Fighters, the Jordanian Lion, Durant El Salawi! Carlos Kramer has me buzzing for this fight. We are straight off to the races. Amin Ayub taking the center of the Brave Arena. Telling shot from the champion right off the back. Pushed that knee in slightly. Attacking that leg again with an oblique kick. One of the more controversial techniques in modern day mixed martial arts, Kerrick. I'm an advocate. I think it's worse, way worse to hit somebody in the head. 100%. Cause a little damage there than jack up their knees. Just something that forces you to defend. Both guys trailing leg kicks. Ahmed Amir, the Egyptian national wrestling champion, in with the takedown. But as we know, Amin Ayub so dangerous off his back. He wins by submission to in his career so far. There's three steps here, Phil. You're going to take your man down. You have to hold him down. Those are hard. And then we have to see impact, either impact or potentially furthering position. And those are sequentially harder and harder to do, incredibly hard to take somebody down, even harder to hold them. And then from there, to, to cause impact or to further position, harder still. I mean, I hope does have three wins by armbar in a submission repertoire. Beautiful sweep into the mud position. And right back to where they were again. What an amazing exchange. That was fantastic, Kirik. I mean, I am very dangerous off his back. May choose to open the guard, use the case to spring off and look for an armbar. Three of his eight wins by a submission have come by way of armbar. Three by rear naked choke, one by guillotine, one by arm triangle. Trying to isolate an arm there was Amin Ayub. Ahmed Amir doing a good job of squaring off the hips anytime Amin Ayub moves. Oh, we grab with the cage there. Zeki Larkin gave the warning, but what presence of mind by Ahmed Amir to take the champion away from the cage so he couldn't post off it. Absolutely, Phil. It used to be back in the day when you took somebody down, you wanted to jam him up against that cage. It's the opposite now at the highest levels of the sport. You want to deny him that cage because it's easier to keep him on their back that way. Woo, that was a huge elbow attempt. Butcher by name, butcher by nature, trying to carve the champion up with those razor-like elbows. He's One more attempt. Could go for the only plata. Ahmed Amir is relentless with those takedowns. If Ahmed you... Amir can get another takedown. It'll be a huge moment for him. If you are a fan of grappling and mixed martial arts, you have been treated so far in the opening three minutes of this fight. The champion Ahmed Ayub going out, going after that lead knee again. Those leg attacks can be money in the bank or it can be bank robbery. You can clean out the vault immediately by damaging that knee. Ahmed Amir does have devastating hooks. We saw them work to great effect against Clayton Silva. 
Will he try and replicate his championship winning knockout potential here? Very wise strategy we're seeing here from the champion. He's essentially set up a moat around a castle, and that moat is attached to that lead knee. In order to wrestle him, you're gonna have to bring that lead knee in close enough for him to kick. Well, right now, the castle is under siege by Ahmed Amir. Oh, nice little hook that wobbled Ahmed Amir ever so slightly. Nice head movement from Amin Ayub. A BJJ purple belt in his own right, but I think his skills exceed that purple belt moniker. Train him with guys like Abdul Abdul Ragimov. Of course, you're going to be well versed in the submission aspect of the sport. Nice inside leg kick from the, key, the number one contender, the challenger. Brave Nation even, oh! Nice kind of striking. I was striking. gonna say even when nothing overt is happening, trust me it is, it's being set up, you saw it right there. When Ahmed Amir throws those power shots, Amin Ayub is like the little boy that fell out of the tree, he's just not there. But there's the bread and butter from Ahmed Amir, beautiful takedown. Little guillotine attempt completely denied. Champ going back now to close guard. <laughs> Round ends. Very, very interesting round. There was the striking dominance in the middle stages of the round, going to the latter stages of the round from Amin Ayub. However, the wrestling from Ahmed Amir was sumptuous. He was able to secure the takedown. He was able to cause damage. A very difficult round to score, Kerrick. Extremely hard. I've scored hundreds of rounds. This one was this one was too hard for me to, to put my name on. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. This has been such a great card tonight, Phil. Such an incredible night. Judges were barely necessary, but right now they are doing their work. I guess it really comes down to the subjectivity of the judges, really, and how they interpret the scoring criteria. No scoring criteria is entirely infallible, but again, it comes down to the interpretation by the judge himself. If I was forced at gunpoint to give it to anybody, it would probably be the challenger or meant the butcher Amir. But as I said, it's anybody's guess at this point. All I know for sure is that Brave Nation, we're winning. This fight's got it all. Deggy Logan just calling for the tile, a little bit of excess moisture there on the floor. Once again, Brave Nation, we apologize for the little delay in the action here, but this is Brave Combat Federation. It's fighter health and safety first, last and always. If we've all got to wait a little bit for some more action, we're going to just to make sure there's no water left on the floor that somebody can slip and hurt a joint on. The only thing these fighters should be slipping is punches, Kirik. <laughs> oh, they're going to be slipping punches aplenty, like you saw right there. I do enjoy the boxing of Amin Ayub, but that's a good shot to the body. That was fair and level from Deggy Lorcan. Ahmed Amir pointed to the ground to, and say that he slept on the water. Deggy Lorcan said it was your team spelled it. Nice cover there from Amin Ayub. Phil, the composure being shown by the champion it is something truly extraordinary to behold. Shots come close, shots glance off his head, shots catch him, and his composure remains complete. It's just so quick with the hands. The minute he's so far in the opening minute of the second round, two of five championship rounds we're into, Amin Ayub is leading the dance. Finishing well with the leg kick. Jim caught a shot to the jaw, touched his nose in a, a gesture that goes back to the Roman gladiators. I mean, I of course, is a former European kickboxing champion. So does have that pedigree so well rounded. And again, like I said about Marcel Grubinski, I mean, I hope it's so well rounded and represents that modern fighter. But I'm, I'm in, I'm near him with the takedown. Needs to be wearing the guillotine. 
How tight is this? Position. Can Ahmed Amir pop the head out? This looks so tight. The head has been popped out. Ahmed Amir is safe. Phil, that was about one inch of positioning away from a submission. Oh, beautiful step over from Ahmed Amir, just solidifying the position now. Brave Nation, the champion's guard has been fully passed. Positioning alone doesn't count for a lot. Under the refinements of the unified rules of mixed martial arts, what we need to see now is impact. I mean, I may try and use that underhook to, to create a little bit of a dogfight here. If he can dig underneath for it. Ahmed Amir trying to just wear that pressure on the champion. Trying to work a crucifix. It's coming. Oh, there's a that's beautiful work for the champion. This is mixed martial arts at the highest level. Uses the underhook expertly to get into that dog fight and sneak out. Beautiful. This is a fantastic fight, Kerry Tunes. Phil, the champ is, is just almost eerie in his defense. He turned his knee in to check a kick before the kick began. This is what I'm talking about when I say his composure is complete. He's reading everything. That is a huge minute for Aminayu to be able to defend the takedown and get in on a submission himself. Ladies and gentlemen, join the conversation using the hashtag BraveCF54, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Let us know your thoughts on tonight's fight. Let us know if it's going to be a case of and you, or if it's going to be a case of and still. Ahmed <laughs> Amir with a cheeky little headbutt there, perhaps. More so an accidental coming together. A little bit of blood coming out of somebody. I think it's Ahmed Amir. We're seeing the champion landing more shots from bottom than the challenger is from top. But again, because the challenger is on top, aesthetically, it looks like he's the man who's in control of the fight. Absolutely. To the average fan, it may look like he is. I'm not sure he is on the judges' scorecard. There's what we need. That is impact. But what you saw right there is when you go for impact, you need to create enough distance for the opponent to get out from under that form of control. Ahmed Amir trying to create a little bit of distance so he can land those shots. Amin Ayub on the bottom trying to munch some sort of offense to do so. He needs to open that guard. He needs to move the hips. These shots from the bottom are doing damage from the champion. They are. Brave Nation, when you throw a shot directly against the ear, particularly as the fight goes on, it can have a, a very significant effect on the struck fighter. And there we go. Round two has come to an end. I am loving everything about this fight so far. From the work of Ahmed Amir to get the takedowns, then the work from the bottom of the champion, Amin Ayub, still landing damaging shots. And I think Ahmed Amir has a little bit of a cut over one of his eyes. We've got world-class cut men here. They're applying ice to there. They're applying grease to there, so the cut doesn't rip any further. I have every expectation that that cut will be dealt with, and here is our Green Hill replay. Phil walk us through. There you see that beautiful takedown from Ahmed Amir. Needs to be wary of the neck when he does that. Somebody as quick as Amin Ayub could snatch that up. Some shots from Ahmed Amir on top. I'd like to see some of the shots landed by the champion. We see some of them there, just keeping himself honest with shots. As you say, he's trying to affect the equilibrium of the challenger by punching through the ear. Perfectly legal shot behind the ear is illegal, on the ear, perfectly legal. The ear is the key, Brave Nation, as you're watching this fight, particularly on the ground. Watch and see if any glove touches the ear. If it touches the ear, it's okay. If it's all the way behind the ear, not so much. 
Amina Yuba, master of counter striking, trying to land that lead hand hook. Oh, huge uppercut! Amina Yuba has done a good job to eat that shot. so slightly when he comes in, Carrick. I feel like the champion has a read of that. He does. What's happening here, Phil, is he's trying to do back what happens to him. He eats a couple of big shots. He tries to eat some big shots of his own. It's an everything you can do, I can do better mentality. But it doesn't always work in this sport. Well, that's another huge moment for Amin Ayub to be able to defend the takedown with that beautiful sprawl of that shot, the first time we've seen the shot shut down like that. What we may be seeing here is the effect of some of those hits, some of those kicks to the legs, some of those shots to the head. Ahmed Amir turning it off. Of course, Ahmed Amir has been into those championship rounds a number of times. This will be the first time, should the fight progress to the fourth round, that Ahmed Amir has gone beyond the third round. Trying to pop in with that knee. The composure being shown by the champion is, is, a, is a thing of beauty. It's a work of art. Whatever happens, his eyes are directly on his opponent's team. He's slipping ever so slightly and bringing shots of his own. It looks like he's found to fill the distance from which the takedowns are not a complete danger anymore. He's doing a good job of leading the dance at the minute. It's the champion, Amin Ayub, who's controlling the center, who's dictating where his opponent's going. There was a head movement. There's an anticipatory backing up. Very soon, you're going to see those exact same, one of those two movements, and it'll be followed up on. I wonder if part of the game plan from Amin Ayub was to drag Amin Amir into the deep waters and see how he goes. are able to get those shots off with serious pop. Mixing in the leg kicks too. Bill, I think a combination of those leg kicks, the straight shots to the knee joint, the low kicks to the thigh, those have slowed the legs down, and now with a little bit of distance management, that double leg takedown may no longer be the threat it was in rounds one and two. It's almost predatory, this approach from Amin Ayub. Just constantly staying in the face of his opponent, edging forward, forcing his opponent where he wants him. They call him fierceness. This is why. I'm in a mirror. This is a jungle or fierce, Phil. And that's what you're saying here. I'm in a mirror. Needs to be careful of circling too much into that lead hand. Into that hook. That's a good shot to the body. The body. The Metamir is taking the full measure of his opponent, and he thinks he understands him. He thinks he knows what he's got, and he thinks he knows what it's going to take to end it. 30 seconds to go in the third round. Can Ahmed Amir survive until that round? Huge moment, though, for the KHK Team Bahrain exponent. He knows now he can still take his opponent down to the ground. If that shot had been stuffed the third time, I think he'd have no more confidence in his takedown, and therefore believe he had no more ability to take this fight down to the ground where he wants.
wants to get it. But right now, Kerrick, this is where the championship medal of a mixed martial arts professional is tested. For the first time in his professional career, Ahmed Amir is going to a fourth round. This is uncharted territory for him. This is where Ahmed Amir lives his life. He is the championship fighter. He has done it a number of times. You have to theorize going into the fourth round, the distinct advantage stands with Amin Ayub. It does right now, Phil. I'm watching very intently in the corners to see what the two corners have to do. One of them is focusing mainly on restoring physical condition because, of course, once you get a little a sets of physical condition back, you feel like you're back in the fight. The, the, the mind and the body are completely interrelated. The other side, we're getting some very specific technical advice. Brave Nation, it is impossible for us to communicate how long five minutes can be. Unless you've been caught in the middle of a forest fire, there is nothing that feels as long as five minutes. You multiply it by three, and not a lot of human beings on Earth can do it. And now we are in the championship rounds. This is the very definition of G Waters. Speaking of deep water, that's exactly. Dickie Lurgan having to rein the fighters in a little bit. A minute, you not impressed by the complaints of water on the mats. Here we go into the championship rounds, Carrick. Amin Ayub, renowned for his gas tank. Able to maintain a relentless pace and turn that up incrementally as the fight progresses. Phil, without exaggeration, Amin Ayub looks better than he did in the first three rounds. I agree. He looks completely warmed up right now. And he's just out of reach when Ahmed Amir tries to fire in those strikes. Ahmed Amir looking to come in at angles. Playing the outside a little bit. Damn! That was his first try. It took him three times to get his opponent down in the last round. Nice inside leg kick from the challenger. Again, Ahmed Amir just throwing reckless abandon, trying to get those shots off, dipping the head ever so slightly. If I can get a sense of that, I'm very much sure Amin Ayub can. Second takedown was not just stopped. It appears as, as if it may have been reversed. Schoolyard headlock. Ahmed Amir needs to be careful of giving up his back here if Amin Ayub pumps the back out, which he has done. Anticipation from the champion to ride out that position. The butcher looking to collect himself, catch a couple of breaths, and then rise up to standing. Fierceness having none of it. Has that figure four grip more so to break the grip of Amin Ayub than to go for anything offensively. They use this to try and switch positions. Can't quite see just how deep he has it. Butcher's in a figure four. In this round, very hard to finalize, but you can use it to further position, oh. as you saw right there. Grammy roll from the champion. Denied, ends up. Bottom side control. Midway point of the fourth round. Ahmed Amir, the challenger on top. Does he have enough steam left to land? Some nasty ground appointed. Phil the Butcher has an exquisitely careful game he has to play. If he throws tiny little shots, they won't count for much. If he gets a little bit of distance, they're going to count, but it's not going to last. Why? Because on the ground, distance is power. To get power, you need distance. That gives your opponent the chance to escape. Ahmed Amir, a fantastic submission fighter in his own right. Seven wins by submission. Three rear naked chokes, two triangles, one armbar, one guillotine. So knows exactly what he's doing down there. Big 
shot from Ahmed Amir. The butcher trying to land big, big shots on the top now. Watch out for the arm bar. Oh, this looks it's tight. It's extended, Phil. It's extended. It's past 180 degrees. Ahmed Amir does a fantastic job. This fight is unreal, ladies and gentlemen. What a championship fight we have here. Brave Nation, how do you like the butcher's heart? Everything. This fight has everything, Kirk. Oh, what a transition! And again, sweep denied! This fight is... I am not intelligent or eloquent enough to describe, to use enough superlatives to, to communicate just how much I am enjoying this fight. Those knees are money in the bank. Drive the point of that kneecap into the thigh, into the hip. Another take down. Take down gets a lot easier. Again, Ahmed Amir trying to land elbows. And the amount of time spent on top by Ahmed Amir is that potentially enough time to revitalize him going into the fifth round? It absolutely is. But the big thing that he needs to do here is cause some damage, is cause some impact. He's doing it right there, but he's given a lot of space. That space is going to be used to regard and boom! Another incredible round ends. Phil, it is not impossible. It is not impossible that right now this bout is 38 to 38, and that means whoever wins the final round wins the fight and is the champion. Yeah, Kerry, that's 100% conceivable. It's because it's been such a back and forth fight. Again, it comes down to the subjectivity of the individual judge scoring the fight. Could be looking at two rounds apiece, could be looking at three to one. I'm just, I'm, I wouldn't be confident in scoring the fight one little bit. Thanks to Green Hill, we're getting a look at some of the great action we had. We saw a figure four on the arm. It was unsuccessful, but it was used to move to a neutral, more neutral place. And now we see my favorite moment of that entire round. That was an absolutely exquisite sweep. But again, the challenger bounces back on top, rears back, lands some elbows. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, this is it! Here we go, fifth and final round. This for all the marbles. This to become the first man to defend the belt, to become the first Egyptian man to hold a legitimate world title in mixed martial arts. Both these guys have it all to play for. Nice work to the body from the champion. Oh, beautiful stiff jab from the champ. Then the jabs shift. Brave Nation, this is high level mixed martial arts. When you go from your left side forward and you shift to your right side forward, it's like being used to, to driving on one side of the road and all of a sudden being stuck in a place where you're driving on the other side of the road. It's very disorienting. Now you're just shy with that knee. Starting the fifth like he started the fourth, dictating the pace, the ebb and flow, the cadence of this fight. Huge takedown for the challenger. Could that be a championship winning takedown? The champion is doing a good job, Phil, of landing significant damage from the bottom, and there it is. A wonderful Great transition. Job with the sweeps. I was just about to say, I don't think he's worried, and he wasn't. Dirty, dirty foot stomps from the champion of Mina Hood. Very slick, you stomp the toes and then throw a shot all the way up to the nose. Making your opponent worried about his toes and nose. Again, Ahmed Amir needs to circle away from that power hand of the champ. Champ is shifting on him, he's going back to that right side forward stance. Huge shot to the body from Ahmed Amir. 
Look at the sprawl. He took flight. Watch out for the Anaconda Joe. Close. He's hit the leg. Anaconda attempt. He's hit the leg. This is tight. But Ahmed Amir survives it. What is going on? Butcher. Chip calls him up. Defender still light on his toes. Bouncing, moving his head. Looking to strike it. Just at the wizard. Oh, and Ahmed Amir ends up on top. Phil, what a fight we are treated to here. I have absolutely no idea how you even start to score this fight, Kerry. Oh, to be a judge in mixed martial arts. This has been one of those nights, Phil, where most of the time we don't need you, but when we need you, we really Potential here for Kimura as well. First things first. Control those hips. Still trying to work for the submission. Trying to work for that triangle. Good posture from Ahmed Amir, but dives right back in. This fight is an absolute war of attrition. Challenger needs to inflict some impact from on top. Some knees to the body, a push elbow. Another transition, another reversal here from the champion could completely change the complexion of this fight once again. Right now, believe it or not, the champion is just for this few seconds where he was on bottom. The supporters of Amin Ayub booing to try and get the stand up. And Amin Ayub's back to his feet, but Ahmed Amir puts him on his back. Kerry, this is crazy. This is Brave Combat Federation. Wow. What a fight, perhaps. The greatest title fight in the history of Brave Combat Federation, Carrick. An absolute honor to call, but now comes the complexity of scoring the fight. It all comes down to how these judges score ground control. If they score ground control heavily, it's gonna be and new. If they discount ground control, look only at impact, it's gonna be and still. I can make an absolutely stellar argument for either fighter having won this by 48, 47, or even bigger. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, thank you for watching this with me. This is gonna go down, as Phil said, I believe is the greatest title fight in Brave Combat Federation history. You see some of the closing seconds of the fight. You see the challenger's face contorted in pain, and what did he do in that situation? He reversed it, came out on top. Brave Nation, both corners very, very rightly feel that their fighter has won this fight.
And I say very, very rightly, because I can make an exquisite case for both of these fighters winning this. Short of 50-45, not a single score is going to surprise me tonight. Decky, the bandit, Larkin is gathering the fighters to center stage. Muhammad, the hawk, Shahid is entering the Brave Combat Federation cage with the world championship belt. Brave Nation, all we need now is the roaring lion, Carlos Kramer. He's the man with the cards. He's the man who's going to tell us the official decision. The Roaring Lion is seated right to my left. He's doing a little bit of quick math. I know he's just moments away from being done. We are all waiting and holding our breath because we don't know what this score could possibly be because it could possibly be just about anything. The Roaring Lion is now standing. Crossing his T's, dotting his eyes. We have dignitaries in the ring. Brave Combat Federation is where you learn to say your excellency. It's where you learn to say your highness. It's where you learn to say Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Mayor. This is Brave and here is Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible main event. Give it up for both of these warriors. After five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored the bout. 48-47 for the new Brave Combat Federation Lightweight Champion of the World from KHK. Give it up for a man, the butcher of men. Eldar Eldorov said this was going to be the year of KHK Team Bahrain hunting belts, and he made it come true. striking background you can see a oh, beautiful inside leg kick to open up Dia Umgalati trying just to bite his time throwing lots of feints trying to elicit the reaction from Mohsin Mohamed Saifi quite tentative in the early stages here Kirik just as I say that spinning hook kick telegraph takedown from Dia Umgalati As I said, made his professional debut in August 2022, getting rid of Bugesa Mustafa in just 17 seconds. Mosin stalking very purposely. That's a real stiff jab just thrown out there. As I've alluded to, both these men are devastating world-class strikers. Golden Boy's strategy, very clear to us now. He's going to stand in front of his opponent and try and take his head off. It's a very Muay Thai-esque stance, very light on the front leg. That's where I'm trying to set up a takedown with a leg kick. Very rare. Didn't quite come off for Daya Ungulati. Daya not the stronger fighter so far as multiple takedown attempts have been shut down cold. Oh, huge shot over the top. Seemed to land more on the gloves. But that's the dynamism of Mohsin Mohamed Saifi. Another stiff jab cutting through the guard. 
Seems Mohamed Saifi seems to have found his range, seems to find his timing. It's interesting, Phil. Golden Boy actually did not try to feint. He wasn't looking for distractions. He simply watched his opponent and appears at this point to have his number. Beautiful work with the knee, wasn't far away. Oh, big elbow over the top. Beautiful tie sweep. That jab is paying dividends for Mohsin Mohamed Saifi. Oh, huge uppercut, Dia and Galati. And a little bit of trouble here. Golden boy smelling blood, Phil. Again, just the speed that he's uncorking those shots, Carrick. Again, he's not setting that takedown up at all. And another sweep takedown. These are huge shots. He dropped him. Down. Man down. Man down. Fight is over. Another first round finish for Mohsin Mohamed Saifi. Gets Daya Ungalati out of there. Unbelievable work. Brave Nation, that is why they call that man Golden Boy. Absolutely stunning performance. Took the measure of his man just visually. Walked him down, stalked him down, and kaboom! About took his head off. There you see the shots. Referee Arn Wallace on top of it. It was that huge shot, just evaded the guard. Gets through, lands perfectly on the temple. And right from that moment, as soon as he hit the deck, couple of follow-up strikes and it was all over. Phil, everybody in Brave Nation knows about takedowns from wrestling and mixed martial arts. It's a little bit less well understood that Muay Thai too has an exquisite takedown game. It's just different. For example, your foot cannot go behind your opponent's foot. It all has to be done from the front. But as we saw there, very sophisticated Muay Thai based takedown game from Mohsen Mohamed Saifi. Mohsen Mohamed Saifi moves to two and oh as a pro. The Roaring Lion, Carlos Kramer, ascending into the Brave Arena, about to make it official. What a way to kick off Brave CF 67 live from Combat Kingdom Bahrain. All right, Brave Nation, what a way to start our historic night at Brave CF 67. This first bout comes to a dramatic end at two minutes and 47 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO to the strikes, Mohsen Golden Boy, Mohamed Saifri. be an incredible night of fights. Touch of gloves and we are ready to go. Expect Abbas to lead the dance with the boxing. Very clean boxing. You see that wide stance. He's had to develop that for mixed martial arts. Anticipation of takedowns, but a big kick right away from Riali. Phil, we're gonna get a quick test of whose striking is the most terrifying. If we see one fight or the other shooting for a takedown, we're gonna know it's the other fighter that's got the scariest, the heaviest fists. Just on first view after 30 seconds, Riali looks like the bigger man in there. Abbas Khan has competed as low as lightweight. Michael Riali seems to have a little bit of length, a little bit of size over Abbas Khan. Khan doing a great job to work that jab. Very much an underutilized tool in mixed martial arts, Kerry. Abbas Khan with the clinch. Can't quite tell if he has double underhooks at this stage. Being defended well by Riali. You could almost say he's defending it Riali well. Setting the tone for the rest of the night, Kerry. Get locked in. Abbas Khan now pressuring Riali against the cage. Has that one heavy underhook, trying to dig in for the second. Brave Nation, if you watch the left knee of Abbas Khan, it's what's pinning his opponent there. With that knee pushed up against the fence, it's very hard to move laterally. When the, when the fighter does, there's a takedown right there. Huge takedown for Abbas Khan. Now in that half guard anchor position, just solidifying the position before doing anything unnecessary. 
still has a lot of time to work with, working the body, trying to open something up. Again, Brave Nation, those little body shots in the beginning, very, very smart. If you go for the head immediately, fighter's gonna cover the head, go for the body a little bit, get him thinking low, the head's gonna be that much more open. Riali trying to get to a quasi-crucifix position attempted there from Abbas Khan. But Riali doing the right thing, he's trying to get to a hip, he's trying to sneak in. You're close to Mount Phil. Oh, there it is. beautifully carried. Now he takes Hook, the back. Two both hooks. hooks. Both hooks are in, he's a little bit high up the back. You can see Riali trying to grab the back of the head and shake Abbas Khan down. Brave Nation, with the hips as high as you see on Abbas Khan, it's a little bit hard to put pressure on the lower back, which breaks the opponent down. Riali doing the right thing. He was trying to cup the back of the head and, and bring Abbas Khan forward. But right now, he's in a precarious position. Abbas Khan with both hooks in right now. Abbas Khan is now trying to flatten his opponent out. Once the opponent's fully flattened out, the opportunities to escape become very, very limited. Yeah, yeah. Dagestani handcuff momentarily, landing little pot shots just to create little bits of space for himself to work from. Nice escape of the hook by Riali. But again, you, Riali staying nice and calm in this position. And mate, watch out for the armbar transition from Abbas Khan here. Go for it, go for it. Oh, there Buster it is. has the elbow oh, straight. That looks tight. The hips are down. He's gone belly yeah, down. There's the tap. Just like that, we are witnessing the evolution of Abbas Khan, no longer a boxer competing in MMA. You are looking at a fully fledged mixed martial artist. Absolutely fantastic win for Abbas Khan. Threw some big hands, got into the clinch, forced his opponent against the fence, forced his opponent to make a mistake there, took him down proceeded to get positioned better and better, took an arm and took it home. Everything, that could not have went better for Abbas Khan. He led the dance early with some of the striking. Transitioned from a back take where he was too high to have the presence of mind to switch to the belly down armbar. That is absolutely beautiful. Traveling in mixed martial arts. Brave Nation, if you open a dictionary and look for mixed martial arts, they could show you this clip. This is how it's done. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, what a way to start off our Brave CF 63 right here in Combat Kingdom. This opening bout comes to a dramatic end at three minutes and five seconds of the very first round. Your winner by armbar from KHK Team Bahrain, Abbas Khan. two is the finish fighter again i'm gonna have to check that tape measure <laughs> he, oh santaliti oh. in the blue corner Aid in the red and this is rare because we're used to seeing georgia taking the center straight away so for him to be put on the back foot will be a rarity for him there's such an intensity that came from Oli santaliti on the walkout staring down during the announcements of each other he is bringing a pressure and a pace that he's going to try and wilt he had under. I think eventually he's going to try and strike his way inside, establish the clinch and the takedown. That would be a wise game plan against such a, a prolific striker. Look at that overhand right, looping there. Almost as if he throws his hooks from behind himself, like whips them right in. Oh, and that's a, a oh, long that's shot. a big moment. That's a huge moment in the fight. And we have a cut as well on the entry. There's a little cut just above the left eyebrow. Mentally, how important are those moments, Kirik? They are, but what's going on right now is a very smart strategy from Oli. He knows he's not the superior striker, so he's trying to jump on him with strikes, throw him off his form. The problem with that is it doesn't last for very long. 
Oh, big takedown coming. Body lock, trip takedown. Oh, well fought off. Very well defended by the Lebanese bulldozer. And that cut as well, I'm going to say it's, it's worse than it actually looks, I think. If you, uh, we get a camera look, it looks like it's quite wide open and it's swelling up that left eyebrow. I'm not quite sure what that came off of. Was it a strike or a, a slight I clash of the heads? I believe it was a strike. And what I've been very impressed with, and you alluded to it on the uh, the build-up as we, as we brought the fighters in, the movement opened up those strikes from he had even under that amount of pressure. I'd love to see the camera angle. I want to get a real look at this cut because you can see it's nasty on that left eyebrow. Pressure though coming from Santalati. Trying to clamp down heavy on that underhook. Oh, oh pulls guard. Pulls guard drops down. Looked like he was about to dive in for a leg. Thought against it, didn't want to fully commit. Incredibly rare in mixed martial arts to see that. 1993, when the sport was founded, Hoist Gracie, of course, won from guard because nobody knew what it was, but everybody knows what the guard is now. Very, very unusual to see somebody pull guard in an MMA fight. Sorry for the triangle, trying to stuff that leg down. Yeah, I was trying to stuff the arm between his legs. Oof. Such an active guard, wants to put the ground game of George Aid to the test. Aid actually tasting blood a little bit off his face. Don't see that all the time either. <laughs> you have to get that protein in. That cut seems to be going just down the side of the face of Oli Santolati. Oh, and but again, again a big shot. Oh, Ooh. the striking. Oh, and oh, again, look a huge at these shots. There's only so many more of these Oli will be able to take. These bulldozer body shots are huge. They're going to pay a huge dividend, maybe fairly shortly. They're bringing the opponent's hands down, slowing down that footwork, cutting into the gas tank. That cut is swelling, not bleeding too badly though, which is a bonus for Oli Santalati. Never stays, never stays in the one space too long, George. He's always cutting different angles. And these, these are big cages. When you look back at the, uh, the fights they've had coming up through their local scenes, the cages are much, much smaller, but the Brave Cage allows that space, that movement. Allows for the for creativity of the striker. Yeah, without a doubt. And that is a takedown. That is a well-executed takedown from Oli Santalate, and he needed it. I would say his timing on that was just about perfect. And as you said, he needed it. And what he needed to do after the takedown is hold his opponent down. He has managed to do that. The third thing he needs is to start raining down effective strikes. Indeed, Carrick, indeed. And we see him now just trying to transition into the side control position. Making everything painful, that forearm across the throat, mm. the pressure of the shoulder as he's trying to work a space to pass the guard. Really, and he does that, slices oh. through that. That's high level stuff. Old school pressure pass, beautiful to see. Nice frame off elbow there, gentlemen. Let's see if he looks for that beat down position. Looks to control that left arm, trap it in his legs. Very strong on top, Kirik. He is. The, Jimmy comes from Finn Fighters Gym, is, is one I've been following for 20 years or more. They, they turn out fighters of incredible toughness and, yeah, incredible technique. And let's see, now he is looking for that beat down. He's trying to separate that arm. This has become a, a more common position in mixed martial arts now, Phil. The scope here for some elbows. Instead of just these little pot shot punches, I'd like to see him free him off and try and, like, wrench the elbow into the face. Even if he doesn't have enough space to land it, just grind it in. Stuff. Excellent first round by both fighters. Well, you look at the tail of that round, the striking of George Ied, and you can see the damage that Jess Isaacson is having to work on over there on the left eye. But the striking was phenomenal, Phil. The movement, like you said, using that Wushu Sandu background, causing damage. But then this moment, we had pulling guard, and then finally the excellent executed takedown. But we saw him ending in top position. Might have been the uppercut there that clipped the eye. I'm not quite sure, but it was a, it was a glancing blow. I don't think it's anything that's going to compromise the future of the fight, but it was a, a definitely an interesting shot landed. We are set for round number two. We've seen both their game plans laid out in front of us, Kirik. What do you want to see next? I actually think Ole can get away with trying some of his slightly wild attacks just a little bit longer. I, I don't think his opponent quite has that timing down. I would like to see him once or twice more just go flying in, throwing the kitchen sink, then try and get an underhook, take it down to the ground where he really wants it, and he clearly has an advantage. 
So we are set for round number two. The bandit deck lurking and they're bringing them together as the cage door shuts here at Brave 48. George Yed in the red corner. Oli Santalate in the blue. And very much in a, a different phase that we saw the fight beginning. George is now taking the center. But again, straight in with the takedown is Oli. And well defended there. Oh, land a shot on the break too. I was going to praise the commitment of that drive for the takedown there, Kirik, but the, the slippy bodies, the sweaty bodies allowed for Georgie Ed to refuse that takedown. He's called a buldo bulldozer, not just because he can move forward. Whoa. Great shot. But because of his solidity, because of his core strength, it makes him very tough to take off his feet. Oh, a nice kick to the body. Got to be careful with those kicks, though, Phil, hasn't it? That can give the opponent the limb to attach to to get that takedown. Especially when there's such a competent grappler like Oli. I think Oli's... Oh, he's working the body. He's really targeting that. The straight right has gone there twice now. Eventually, a couple more shots like that, and anyone would end up folding like a deck chair. Ole just trying to find his opening for the takedown, but oh. he's finding that takedown defense of George impregnable right now. And part of that th defense that he's got is the footwork, right, Kirik? And it might not be fancy footwork like the Ali shuffle is, but his judgment of range, his, his stepping in, his angling off, it's all exquisite footwork and uh, part of his striking. It is indeed. It's actually picture perfect. It's just a little bit hard to see. Not as easy to see as a Superman puncher. A beautiful double leg like that can he fit if he can finish this double leg it's huge and he did wow. that's a big moment for Ole what can he do from this position now that he has three minutes with which to work some fighters choose to stay inside a closed garden ground and pound his grappling is so good I think he's going to try and pass the half guard a lot of fighters just stay in top half guard and ground and pound I think he's going to try and pass all the way to the side and finish the fight this is exactly where he wants to be you mentioned it Phil, as far as a moment within this fight, there are these moments that, that happen along, these incremental moments during a battle with another human being, mm. and they affect you mentally as well as physically, and that was an excellent, a big takedown with a lot of time to play with for I Ollie. Think what you're referring to, Brian, would be the microaggressions within a fight, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> I needed at least one tonight. <laughs> I needed at least one. <laughs> And again, working from inside the guard. Two minutes, 20 seconds in the second round for Oli to try and progress this position. Back when he was standing, Oli Santalati was actually thinking about going for a straight ankle lock. Again, he fights a little bit different and it's working for him. Pressure covering the mouth just makes it ugly on bottom for you. It's one of those nightmare positions and a nightmare opponent where you'll just dream about him for... I say dream, have nightmares <laughs> about him for, uh, for many days after feeling this sort of pressure. Oli just trying to come up into combat base to try and pass. But we're seeing a very close guard, a very flat back. There's nothing, he's not even controlling the posture really of, of Oli. It's now very low down the back of Oli as well. Oh, and Oli just dropping that elbow in. There's about half a dozen basic strategies from the closed guard. Aid is using one of them. He's basically trying to survive. He's trying to hold on. He could be trying to get to the back. He could be sweeping. He could be striking. He'd be trying to stand up. But what he's choosing to do is hold his opponent close and minimize the damage. He's doing that successfully. He does have experience as well, Oli, uh, George, sorry. This would be his 11th professional MMA fight. So he has been under pressure before, but... He's much more used to the striking, and that sort of efficiency, that gas tank, that engine, mm -hmm. is a very different one that you use when you're under the, uh, the attacks from bottom, when you're feeling somebody's pressure. It really does wear on you in a very different way. Yeah, well, the difference would be when you're the one striking, you're essentially regulating your own output. You're essentially the one regulating your own gas tank. When you have to physically fight against another human being who's imposing themselves upon you from a top position, you don't really have control of how much energy you expend. Therefore, you will gas quicker. And this could be an excellent tactic on the part of Oli Santalate, Kirik, just not making this a fight-ending moment, but just making it one which may open it up by just grinding and taking away that cardio, that enthusiasm of fight from uh, Georgie Ed. 
It is. This is what you call the grind. It is, in my opinion, the highest form of mixed martial arts. It's the one where there's least likely for something crazy, something unexpected to happen. He is grinding his opponent down into the mat, and he's doing it successfully. Round two in the books. And the story of that round, Phil, was the takedown. And for me, it's the way he commits to that charge for the takedown. You sometimes see people tentative with strikes, especially when they've taken damage going in, like the uppercut, like shots like that. Yeah. But he fully commits. Well, fully commit. That's why he got the takedown, because he fully committed to it. And not only did those three minutes of top control give him a little bit of a reprieve, it also, as we said earlier, potentially has zapped the cardio down a little bit of George. So going into the third round, you have to feel that Oli Santolati has a little bit of the ascendancy. Yeah, it felt like it's certainly in that second round. And Kirik, I'm popping you in the corner there of uh, Ied. What are you saying to your fighter? What do you do now to, uh, to switch this round tactically and mentally? The out outcome of what I would tell him is, each of you likely has one round. Whoever wins the last round is gonna be the winner. If you keep it standing, it's you. If you let him take it down, it's your opponent. You can't come straight in over and over again naked. You can't come in without a lot of setups. You need to get on that bicycle, move herky-jerky, circle left, circle right, choose your moments, or you're gonna get put in your back and the fight won't go your way. Well, I am hoping for a lot of herky-jerky tonight in this final round. Oh, I love me some herky-jerky <laughs> striking on a fight. <laughs> I cannot wait five minutes for this to be decided. Such a battle between these two. Ied in the red corner, Santa Latte in the blue. How long are you giving it before that first takedown attempt, Phil? I'm going to say before the four, before the minute is over, I think there's going to be a, a takedown attempt. But that's a huge leg kick just right into the meat of the thigh. And I think he heard you, Kirik. He is certainly moving as far as Ied. He's on his bike circling lots of lateral movement never being a stationary target and, and most importantly never letting the cage have his back he's listened to he's got an incredible corner and he listened to him not every fighter is smart enough to let's see if this whole round goes his way if he can keep it standing it should if he can't it likely doesn't this is where tactics in mma come in it's not just who's the better fighter it's how you each employ what you've got always oh, santa lie he just weighing up his options right now. I think he's going to try and counter the strikes of George Ed with the takedown. But well, one thing he's got by the fact of that second round is you saw it, oh, you saw it in the uh, first and second round. And he did it there. Huge. Oh. oh, I was going to say George Ed. He's almost up a big cut underneath the eye. Oh. I was going to say he wasn't sitting down on his strikes as much, but then he did that. That is a, that is a big Very smart. Cut. Backed out. Woo. Oh, bringing the doctor in to take a look at the cut, I think. That is instantly opening him up. Under the right eye there. And I was about to say, because Georgia was on the back foot, he was moving. Not so, so the strikes didn't have as much pop. As soon as he planted those feet, as soon as he picked a target, unleashed the combination with feet planted, that's the damage. And just look at it filling up. Look how quickly that is filling up under his right eye. Oh, that's pinpoint accuracy with striking, isn't it? Again, world-class medical staff here. If the doctor allows the fight to continue, it is safe for the fighter to continue. And we are set. What a way to celebrate your birthday, <laughs> Ali Santa Latte. Well, it's not different to how we celebrate birthdays back home. It's like <laughs> just, uh, Except you get paid for it. No, it doesn't happen in the confines oh. of the cage. And we have now seen Georgie Ed, but what he's got to be careful of this. Standing still now, being that stationary target or planting those feet might give the opportunity to Santalete for this moment. Oh, and he fired for that takedown, didn't he? Again, at not at the similar time do he achieve the takedown in the second round. But he was so lit up by the damage he had caused with those strikes that he wanted to cause more damage. And that almost, well, that did give up this position, Kirik. It did. Aid in the second round was basically just holding on limiting damage i think he's going to try and be aggressive from bottom now i expect to see some strikes from bottom eventually get a foot in that hip drive the opponent off pop back up to standing where he desperately wants to be right now but oli santalate did exactly what he needed to do dug deep show that spirit that he is known for that finish spirit a little bit of a can opener there that may just be to try and open the guard Try and step over, but he seems comfortable to sit inside the guard and land his strikes. But when you consider now in the third round that he's been cut open, forcing the doctor to come in and have a look yep. at the three minute mark, he gets his takedown. Do the three minutes of groundwork negate the fact that he's been popped open by Ed? 
this is where the judges earned their money. Mm. And there's no solid answer to that. It comes down to a judgment call if you don't finish the fight. That's what happens. All your work, half your pay, goes into the hands of someone else. That's terrifying when you put it like that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a sport oh. for the faint of heart. Now these men laying it all on the line here. Painting this canvas with the blood of George Santalate. Whoever takes the victory here, this is a, a spectacular bout between these two. Oh, he's, he might have reversed him. Look at that making. Oh, the urgency was there, but he just needed to get back to his feet, throwing those wild limbs back up. But back into the guard, Santa Latte. Another one of those moments you talked about, Phil. Yeah. It really is a moment like that where you, George just took a big deep breath there, which again tells me just how pivotal that moment was. He wasn't able to get back to his feet. He was smothered by Ole. But again, Ole needs to really start being a lot more active and a lot more definitive in this kind of situation. Oh, and again, dropping him down. Clock ticking, 49 seconds left. Well, he's doing a good job at doing enough so the referee can't stand him up. I'm not certain he's doing enough to win this. The referee is going to stand him up, though. We're going to see the last 35 seconds of this on the feet. Expect something big from Georgie Ed. Expect a takedown attempt from Santa Lati. Oh, wearing the marks of this fight on his face is the birthday boy, the amazing Oli Santa Lati. That's a nice kick from Oli. Was it just south of the border? George comes over the top with a shot of his own, and he's been working that body beautifully throughout the fight, hasn't he? When he has been on his feet, that is one of the targets he's certainly made good use of. Oh, and now pushing the pace and the pressure. Great fight between the two. Gentlemen, there's an old saying in boxing. You can, re you can cut. Judging all the way down to a simple question, who hurt who more? By that standard, I do like Georgie Ed here, but I'm not sure how the judges are gonna call this one. I think this is such a tight one to call. I think they both had their moments, control, dominance of position, as well as, as you said, damage, which is being yeah. worn on the face there of uh, Santa Latte. The face of Oli Santalati really telling the story of the fight, but again, it's a matter of interpretation. Do you give dominance to, or do you give credence to the near 10 minutes of, of ground control we've seen exhibited by Oli Santalati, or do you give credence and, and favor to the, the damage done by George Ed? We shall wait and see how our judges here at cage side saw that one. What I do know is that our fans of Brave Nation just witnessed yet another bloody, spectacular, fantastic, amazing fight here at Brave 48. The canvas tells the tale. <laughs> there is so <laughs> much blood and heart and spirit left inside that cage. For those of you in Brave Nation wondering what this little delay is about, there's a card runner, score runner. The score runner is collecting from two of the judges, the scores, taking them to the head judge. The head judge is then gonna look at it, make sure everybody, every I is dotted, every T is crossed, puts it together, hands it off to Carlos Kramer. Carlos will then enter the ring. But it's absolutely crucial that that math gets done correctly. And in the tumult of a fight, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. So bear with us for just a few seconds longer. I know Carlos Kramer's gonna be entering the Brave Combat Federation cage very soon. And we see there, those cuts, that damage. Great work from our cut lady. Our cut person, Jess Isaacson. One of the best in the business. Just don't start her talking. <laughs> Loves a chit chat, so she does. You know it's a good fight when there is blood splattered on the camera <laughs> as well. I thought there was a little bit out of focus and I realized no, there is claret blocking our view, but we are almost set, we are ready. One man has the score, one man knows the outcome. That man is the roaring lion, Mr. Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible war that was. Both of these gentlemen put it all on the line. We go to the judges' scorecard.
Your first judge scores about 29, 28, A, E. Your next judge scores about 29, 28, Santa Lati. And your third judge scores about 29, 28 for your winner by split decision. Only the amazing Santa Lati. And there we have it, Ole Santalati on his birthday. What a way to turn 27. But again, uh, there was the questions we were asking, gentlemen. Did it come down to the striking or did it come down to the ground dominance? Anthony Zidane taking the back foot, he's trying to implement some lateral movement here. Throwing lots of fakes, switching stances. You say you have to mind your P's and Q's when you're against someone like Ayman Galal. Incredible striking credentials, now trying to parlay that success in Kung Fu and Sanda into MMA. And the range from which a Sanda striker can hit is, is very different than mixed martial arts, very different than any other combat sport. That's why you're seeing Anthony Zaidan constantly moving, does not want to be a static target for Ayman Galal. Both these fighters yet to throw anything of great gravity, just as I say that big front kick right up the middle. Anthony Zaidan dedicating this fight to his late father, Mr. Nagi Zaidan, who unfortunately passed away two weeks ago. So our thoughts and condolences go out to the wider Zaidan family. Galal Phil may be letting himself get just a little bit too close. When Anthony pops forward momentarily, he's got opportunities to strike there. You can see just how much Zaidan respects the striking of Ayman Galal. Trying to find those openings, throwing lots of fakes, trying to get some sort of response from the stimulus. Galal starting to fake now. Again, just trying to get a bite and get reads on his opponent. Expect Galal to commit 100%. When he does let go, there you go. Has that rear hand loaded, ready to go. Big kick from Zaidan, but met with a shot over the top from Galal. Get the impression that both these fighters are, are more counter strikers, which can often lead to a little bit of a stalemate, Kirk. Only at first. Each of them is going to land one clean shot. It'll remind them how much they love doing it, and they're going to do another one. There you go. Galal just trying to size up Anthony Zaidan. You can see he's trying to find those gaps. K9 shifting a little bit. That's Caught a huge, of it. huge leg kick. Expect that leg kick not to be followed up with another leg kick, but some a little bit higher. Oh, oh. huge. They are picture perfect leg kicks. Zaidan does not want to be within kicking range. Either has to be all the way in or all the way out. And former Brave Combat Federation champ champ, Mohamed Fakhreddin in the corner. Oh, big shot over the top. It's good for the confidence. Got a real scream from Zaidan. K9 knows what he wants to do. Stand right here and trade. Is K9's bark worse than his bite? We shall see. First pun of the night. Very, very tentative opening round. Zaidan almost in stalking mode right now. Oh! Clipped the, the cup. Kick may have been just a little bit low. 
Brave Nation, Fighter has up to five minutes to recover from this, but I do not believe he will take the full five minutes. I wonder if we can get a look on that on the replay. Just as I say, great work from the guys in the truck. And, oh, that was clean on the cup. I'm not sure if clean is the word we want to use, Phil. That one was dirty on the cup. And it's like it's like a car crash. It's like driving by a car crash. You don't want to look, but you strain your neck to see it. And there's only 50% of the population can truly empathize with what Ayman Galal is going through right now. Totally unintentional from Anthony Zidane. As you alluded to, Kirik, Ayman Galal does have a full five minutes to recompose himself. Those of you in Brave Nation who wonder how exquisitely trained martial artists like this can land a blow accidentally, it's because the kick starts down on the floor mm. and moves up to a legal target. In this case, it was moving at it, aimed at a target above the waist. Opponent moved forward, and we got what we got. Final minute of the first round. Anthony Zaidan throwing lots of fakes. Both fighters caught each other. You can see Galal wants to keep this on the feet. He feels he has the distinct advantage. And when you look at his background, you can see why. That takedown off a kick fill is a characteristic part of Sanda. See a little marking just over the left eye of Galal. Final 10 seconds, starting to heat up a little bit. Galal calling Zaitan on. Nice shot. Jumping front kick. What exquisite timing on the takedown. Absolutely fantastic timing on that takedown, Brave Nation. Phil, this is going to be a little bit of a hard round to score, I think. I think you, on the balance of play, I think you have to give it to Ayman Galal. He seemed to be pushing the pace a little bit more, seemed to land the more significant shots. It's a good shot to the body from Anthony Zaidan. Both these fighters have landed very clean shots now with their hands and with their feet. I do believe, Phil, they're all warmed up. Yep. Round two, they're going to show us a different look. That's what I was just about to say, Carrick. I don't think you're going to see either fighter be as tentative as they were in the first round. They've had those initial five minutes to, to download the data, if you will, to get a little bit more of a feel of their opposition. K9 up, staring his opponent down. There is a definite intensity about Anthony Zaidan. Zaidan has shifted. He's now in a southpaw stance. And that's where he'll unload that big kick to the body, perhaps. You can see him faking with it. Just trying to, both men trying to jockey for the position of the, the jab. The shifting back and forth, Brave Nation, is, makes it very hard for the opponent to tell where an attack is going to come from, but you can get caught in the middle of it. Zaidan needs to be wary of where he's putting that chin. That is a powerful kick. Little distant, uh, difference in styles here, Phil, stylistically in terms of defense. Yep. More technical striker seems to be Ayman Galal. Galal has the hands a little bit higher. He's shelling up a little bit better. K9 relying on movement instead. Both fighters trying to land that big one hitter quitter. Saidan stalking a little bit now, trying to cut the cage off. Oh, he's out! Out! 
of nowhere. What just happened? Like you said, Kerrick, completely out of nowhere. Anthony Zaitan gets a huge win. It now moves to 3-0, and oh, and you can see just what it means to him, dedicating this fight to his late father. You can see the outpouring of emotion. Boom! Oh, clean on the chin. K9 is a dog inside that cage. Follows it up with some big shots, and like you say, completely out of the blue, lands the big shot, sets it up with a pawing jab, and boom! It's not the size of the dog in the fight, and it's not the size of the fight in the dog, it's the straight right hand. Boom! Out of nowhere. Absolutely beautiful knockout. And again, Brave Nation, the intention of this Brave Combat Federation 67 is to show you the next generation of great Arab fighters, and you are, see you are seeing it here already in two fights, and you're going to see this in fight after fight. When you realize just how dangerous a striker Ayman Galal is, it makes the win for Anthony Zaidan all the more impressive. Carlos Kramer is in the Brave Arena and he is about to make it official. All right, Brave Nation, this bout comes to an electrifying end at one minute and 24 seconds of the second round. Your winner by knockout, Anthony K9! Indeed, Phil, indeed. <laughs> Ahmed Sami, an incredible striker. Be interesting to see. How he approaches this fight, as we said, Umar al Dafrawi, a completely different entity to the fighter that lost to Ahmed Sami back in 2018 because MMA, as we know, evolves at such an expedited rate. And on a single leg, they're eating some big shots, scores the takedown. In his last fight, Umar al Dafrawi spent a lot of time on his back against Kevin Ruart. He was trying to work for the triangle there, but Ahmed Sami wise to it. Dafrawi staying active on bottom. Try to get control of an arm. There he goes for a knee shield, looking for an arm bar perhaps soon. Sami doing a good job of keeping the hips square. Oh, big shot landed. Oh, and maybe trying to get in on the heave. He's, he does not have the right part of his arm there. No danger yet. I mean, you have to be so careful when you're attacking a lower limb submission because you have to commit both hands to it, which can leave you vulnerable to getting punched right in the face. The Frawi again, spinning those hips. Sami needs to square off a little bit here. There it is. Has one butterfly hook there. May try an elevator sweep. Very nice guard work so far from Omar al Dafawi. He's largely keeping himself safe. Has not gotten close to a sweep or a finish, but he's starting to set him up. Very good technique we saw here. Very, very important when you're on bottom that you land some shots. Oh, in Ahmed Sami may have just thrown himself into a triangle. Can't quite see if the, the arm's in. I think he's safe. Oh, that leg is looking for a head to go over. Oh, he's trying to close it. Can't quite see if he has the arm from this position. Scope for a big up kick, but 
Ahmed Sami doing a great job of just compressing Omar Al Dafrawi. I think Ahmed Sami might be caught, Kerik. Some big shots coming down his way. Wouldn't be a surprise. Trying to go inverted. Big up kick. Solid ground and pound being landed here by Ahmed Sami. Omar Aldaflawi needs to move. There is a time, Brave Nation, to strike from the bottom. That was not it. You don't want to exchange punches with somebody who's on top because gravity is a thing. Scope here for elbows from Ahmed Sami. We've got a guard return, or just about. Oh, back tick, potentially for Ahmed Sami here. Omar Dofrawi is up. Maybe looking to grab an arm now. Put a Kimura on it. Can't quite see just how significant that cut is. But that looks like a lot of blood, Carrick. If that's above the eye, it could prove problematic. Double underhooks. 50-50 position now. Ahmed Sami just wearing, grinding on Omar Al Dafrawi against the cage. Trying to take a little bit of the wind out of the seals. Beautiful head position. Excellent use of the head, excellent transition down to the ground. Wants to avoid that guard now, wants to stay in top side control. Switching between scarf and side control, but Omar Al Dafrawi gets right back up. Spinning back fist attempt, but that's the danger. Oh, huge shots from Omar Al Dafrawi to finish the round. Quasi crucifix position. Call from the corner for quick elbows was not quite time. Yes, Isaac's intending to that cut straight away. Can't quite see just how bad it is. Doesn't seem to be impeding the vision. Getting a look, second look at some of that exciting action. Picture perfect double leg. Nice work from El Dafrawi, pulling guard. This is where Dafrawi should not have been hitting back. Wanted to get to the safety that is represented by guard. That is beautiful head positioning from Ahmed Sami. Just right. And a sneaky little sweep. Oh, there is a price to pay when you do those highlight reel techniques and they do not work. It's not free. All right, both these fighters have their marching orders, know their fighting orders. <laughs> oh, let's see who can carry them out better. Second round. Omar Al Dafrawi cannot afford to spend a lot of time on his back in this round. Ooh, might have been a little bump of the heads there. Big kick to the body from the South Pole, Al Dafrawi. Oh, that was a beautiful front kick. That landed clean. Omar Al Dafrawi just eats it, but now. Ahmed Sami trying to put the pressure on. Oh, big knee from Al Dafrawi. Again, Ahmed Sami pressuring Omar against the cage. Elbows a little too high to be putting that neck in any danger on the guillotine. Oh, he you jumps guard. This is potentially dangerous because if you don't get it, it's arm in guillotine is traditionally a little bit harder to get. Dafrawi needs to get that guard a little bit higher for my liking. Seems to be tightening it up, but he's very low. I'd like to see him get those legs up a little bit higher. As the saying goes, good luck with that. It's gonna be very tough. That's about it. May find himself much. Again, this is not where Omar wants to be. And it's where Ahmed Sami did some of his best work. Very smart of Omar though, to throw some shots in there. There was no takedown. He volunteered to go on bottom. 
did go for a credible submission attempt. Now he's out striking his opponent from bottom. Big elbows being landed through the guard here by Ahmed Sami. Is Ahmed Sami perhaps a little bit fatigued? I was gonna say, Phil, the pace has slowed yeah. measurably at this point. Could be fatigue, maybe a little bit of a stalemate in terms of their skill sets. Maybe a little bit of an adrenaline dump for Ahmed Sami. This is, of course, his Brave Combat Federation debut. Nice push elbows coming from top. Intelligent work just to cover the mouth. The big hammer fist. Woo, thunderous kicks coming from top. May not have a huge effect, but certainly they're gonna play to the judges. So Omar seems happy to stay in this position. I'd like to see him with a little bit more urgency, but. He's slow to come off the floor, Phil. There may be a conditioning issue here. Both these fighters might be fatigued. Oh, you there is a conditioning issue here. Oh, he's definitely tired. I think both of these guys are maybe sucking in wind a little bit. Defrawi's corner wants him to make a little bit of room, come in with a point of the elbow. But it's Ahmed Lee Sami that's landing the shots now. Dafrawi needs to get the feet on the hips, try and create a little bit of space and get back to his feet. As aesthetically, it does not look good in the eyes of the judges if you're spending a lot of time on your back. Dafrawi clearly tired at this point. He may even be willing to take a couple of shots if it buys him a few more seconds to rest up. Oh, it's a big shot from Sami. Ahmed Sami smiles for the camera. If I was him, I'd be a little bit more concerned with what's going on in the fight. Still throwing shots. Big shot over the top. If you're Ahmed Sami, might be a good idea just to stand off a little bit and let Dafrawi back to his feet if he's a little bit compromised and tired. He's enjoying this. He's grinding his opponent down more, thinks he can land enough shots because taking a shot, eating a shot is actually physically tiring. Knows his opponent's tired, thinks he can hit him a few more times. And Brave Nation, when we reference, when Phil and I reference a fighter's condition, we are not suggesting in any way, shape, or form that he did not adequately prepare. It's always typically an injury. Big shots mounted. Maybe looking at the beginning of the end. Does he have enough time? <laughs> Saved by the buzzer. It'll be interesting to see if Omar Al Dafarawi can come out for the third round. He's got an excellent corner. They're going to assess their man physically, they're going to assess him mentally. And if they don't think it's the right thing for him to do, they're going to keep him in the corner and call it. Here we're watching these elbows rain down. And again, Brave Nation, Omar al Dafrawi, in all likelihood, got injured at some point during his training. Wasn't able to do the cardio that he knew he needed to do. Took the fight anyway, stepped in here. But he is gassed at this point. And getting elbowed in the head is exhausting. I'm not saying that as a joke. When you get hit hard, it's harder to breathe. You, you, Blood doesn't go as well through your system. It's exhausting. Getting punched in the face, elbowed in the head, it's like running. So he is doubly compromised now in terms of his condition. And also spending that amount of time on your back with a fighter in a dominant position on top, that in and of itself is incredibly draining. Dafrawi holding his arms over his head, trying to force some oxygen into his lungs. Phil Omar El Dafrawi is fighting just on heart now. Trying to find a home for that straight left. 
His muscles do not have the oxygen that they need to function. And he's, you can see he's struggling to keep the hands up, gets taken down. And if Ahmed Sami can get himself in the dominant position and land some of those hellacious elbows, it could be over pretty quickly. Big elbow, you heard the crack of that. That's one of the things I love about these exclusive events. You can hear the shots reverberate around the arena. The Frawi now is a closed guard, clamped down on his opponent's head. Brave Nation, the opponent then cannot move the head back, which you need. You need that distance, that leverage in order to land big shots. You can throw little shots from there, but not big ones until the head clears back. Well, the Frawi took a big, big deep breath. You can see Sami trying to land at those elbows. Dafrawi trying to lock up the arms. Dafrawi really needs to do something here, Kirik. But as you say, if, if you are gassed and fatigued, this is absolute hell for Dafrawi. He's operating right now, Phil, on heart and instinct. He simply does not have the physical ability right now to fight. Transition to side control. And Dafrawi, you can tell he's not even getting onto the hip to try and shrimp back in. Try and get a knee in. The beginnings of a key lock attempt there was shut down, but there may be a second one shortly. Now he's just rubbing the point of the elbow into the face of Dafrawi. That was pure heart by Dafrawi to get to his knees, but he's eating huge shots here. Dafrawi's corner imploring him to keep moving. His movement has now been shut down almost completely. And you wonder what Dafrawi has left. He's going to eat some big shots here. Elbows getting through. Bottom half guard up against the fence is three quarters mounted. I have to give credit to Dafrawi for still being there. He's got a massive heart. <laughs> Ahmed Sami enjoying himself in there. Big elbows. He's finding the gaps. into that anchor position and from here Ahmed Sami just wants to uncork some grind and pound. Key lock attempt from inside guard, very unlikely to work. Dafrawi just doesn't have anything left in his legs, does he, Kirik? Nothing left in the legs, it's the, the heart and the lungs that are, I'm sp speaking about the heart physically, they're not metaphorically. Mm. The heart and lungs just are not pushing the oxygen to his body that he needs. Into the final minute of the third and final round. Can Ahmed Sami get the finish or can Omar al Dafarawi pull a rabbit out of the hat? That's a fantastic elbow. These are big shots, Carrick, right big in front of us. Big shots coming down, Brave Nation. Dafrawi is compromised now. Oh, huge flying knee, eats a head kick. Short time now, Brave Nation. Can Ahmed Sami get it done? And Kerrick, would it be out of the realms of possibility to say that we could be looking at a 10-8 round here? Yeah, they're much more generous now under the refinement of the unified rules. This this is absolutely in my, my mind a 10-8 round. Oh. 
almost called that fight with one second to go. R referee Aaron Wallace very nearly called that, didn't he, Kerry? Brave Nation. The Vanilla Gorilla was a split second away from calling the end of that fight. But again, you have to talk about the heart of Omar al Dafrawi staying in there when he was clearly compromised after the first round. This is literally a case of watching a man fight his heart out, Phil. That's a glorious point. I thought we were going to see a finish at the end there from Ahmed Sami. Landed a flying knee, a head kick, big shots. Pretty much did everything but finish the fight. That third round was incredibly dominant. That was, Phil, actually a great, this is actually a great fight for Omar El Dafrawi. He learned how tough he is. He learned that with nothing left in the gas tank, he can hang in there. That's gonna stand him in very good stead in future fights. That was a huge pop knee. Look at, look at that right on the button. Dafawi finally standing under his own power. Unable even to drink water right now. All, all heart from Omar Al Dafawi. Ahmed Sami is now 2 and 0. Oh against Omar al Dafrawi, Moves to nine and two in his professional career. Final scores just being tabulated. I don't think the outcome of this is going to be contentious or a surprise to anyone, Kirik. We know who's- All right, Brave Nation, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard. Your first judge scores about 30-26. Second judge scores about 29-27. And your third judge scores about 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision. Out of the blue corner, Ahmed Lee Sammy!